and uh, pretty intimidated. These guys are, you know, former state and national champions with the bands on their sleeves and, you know, big teams. And here I'm the only guy on my team uh, in the race and just had the legs that day. And... What is your name? How old are you and how long have you been riding? My name is Mark Tucker. I'm 44 years old and I've been riding about four years. At what age did you get started with cycling? Uh, I was 40 years old when I got started cycling. I had a severe back injury, herniated disc, and was told I should stop running, stop snow skiing, and my surgeon suggested I try cycling. So after my surgery, I put on uh, some cycling shoes and clipped into a bike for the first time with pedals and that was uh, kind of how I got started. What was your initial thoughts of cycling as a sport? I didn't know much about it. Had kind of seen the Tour de France but never followed it or anything. Was not a huge fan of Lycra and uh, couldn't picture myself uh, being one of those, those guys in spandex. I've since obviously changed my thought on that one. What was your athletic background before you got injured at 40? I played a little bit of baseball in high school and uh, kind of started riding uh, dirt bikes a little bit after that and, and stopped the team sport stuff. Got into snow skiing pretty heavily in my late teens up until my back injury. So pretty much just snow skiing, kind of 20s and 30s and just like to ski hard and uh, eventually kind of caught up with me. What did that first year of cycling look like for you? Bought a used bike off a buddy who was a triathlete, and so I had uh, clip-on aero bars and went out with him. And he's like, "Hey, you gotta, you gotta download this app called Strava, and, and that way you can track your rides and stuff." And just started riding and wanted to see kind of how many miles I could do, and was doing it maybe two, three days a week. Um, a long ride for me in that first six months was probably, you know, 30 miles felt like a lot. Then I just kept kind of pushing myself more and more. I did a couple of uh, time trials, kind of more informal through the local cycling club that they put on. You know, did okay there, but uh, that was that was kind of it. No, nothing competitive, just kind of solo riding, actually more the group riding. I hadn't really even integrated into the kind of the cycling community yet at that point. So at what point in the last four years did you decide to start getting competitive or kind of take it a little more serious? I decided to get into the competitive side of it. One of those uh, club time trials that I had done, uh, one of the guys put it on, uh, Richard Gable's friend, and didn't really know him at all at the time, had, had kind of heard the name and vice versa. And he kind of reached out to me through a friend and asked if I'd be interested in, in joining a race team. And so I did a, a ride with him and thought, what the heck, I'll give it a shot. What was that very first race like? And how old were you when you did it? The first race that I, I entered in, it was at the end of the 2016 season. It was the, the NorCal, the Red Kite finale up in Pleasanton. I uh, raced in the Cat Fives, signed up with Tony Wolf at ATP Coaching to, to coach me and, and got a bike with a power meter about two months before that. So I hadn't worked a lot specifically on my fitness, but was pretty strong. And for the length of the Cat 5 race, I was able to, to just eat wind on the front the whole time. And came around the last turn, first wheel, and, and finished in third place. And realized pretty quickly that the strongest guy didn't win, but it was the, the smartest guy. And I was not the smartest guy. Success, do you think that plays a role? No, I mean, I used to be a fisherman and you know I would fly fish and I like to catch steelhead. I was drawn to something that was challenging. If we went to a trout farm and you, you know, you caught a fish every cast, that wouldn't be fun. So I don't think it's, it's the success that brings me the, the passion, the motivation. It, it certainly fuels it. I like going into a, an event feeling like I'm the underdog. I don't ever want to feel like I'm the favorite, and I don't think I ever have been the favorite. I mean, there are some super strong, super talented guys that have been doing this way longer than I have. Not just stronger, but a lot smarter. Um, the, the race tactics is a, is a huge thing that I'm still you know, trying to wrap my brain around. Walk me through what your program looked like in the first year and what your program looks like going into 2020. The first full season uh, for me racing was the 2018 season. So that first race was the, the end of 2017, I guess it was. But uh, so for the 2018 season, it was to, to just follow um, my coach's training plan, you know, do a FTP test, see where my power was at, and then 
you know, do structured intervals off of that, intervals two or three days a week and, and free riding, but, you know, I was riding 10 hours probably on average. 10 hours a week with like how much structure is in that? Two to three days a week is structure, whether it's, you know, sweet spot intervals or, you know, SFRs or uh, 4020s. Um, I still don't understand fully the science behind the structured workouts. I just, you know, I trust my coach and, you know, pay him to, to think so I don't have to. I don't know what TSS means and I don't geek out on all that stuff. I know watts. I know watts per kilo and I know the, the stronger you are and the lighter you are, the faster you are. So I've, I've, uh, I've dropped some weight. I was probably 188 pounds when I started cycling and, you know, right now I'm 170. And you know, that's what I race at. So, well, what's the highest your FTP in watt per kilo has gotten so far? My highest FTP is kind of where I am now. I haven't really dropped off from that. I did a, I think it was a 364 20 minute, and so that put me at like 345, I think. And my, with my weight where I'm at now, I'm right about four and a half watts per kilo FTP. 40 with a back injury yeah. to 43 and two state championships. I started as a cat five like everyone else. I did a, a, a race at the end of 2017. Like I said, I got third there. I raced like a, a moron. I, I think I raced the, uh, the 2018 season well. I uh, won a lot of races. Got mandatory upgraded from a four to a three after winning, I think it was a Sequoia Classic crit down in Visalia and then was a three for the balance of I guess 2018 and 2019 I won the Chico stage race for Masters in the 3-4 category. I had won a Masters 1-2-3 road race a couple of months before that and the only reason I entered the category 1-2-3 race is I was traveling back from visiting family and that race and the time fit on when I was kind of passing through town and Entered the Bariani road race without any teammates. Pretty intimidated. These guys are, you know, former state and national champions with the bands on their sleeves and, you know, big teams. And here I'm the only guy on my team uh, in the race and just had the legs that day and rode well and went into a two man break and bridged a solo guy up the road. And I attacked those guys with like 3K to go and put a gap on them and, and won that. And then, like I said, Chico, going into that, people were pissed off that I was still racing in the 3-4 category. Had a lot of emails from the upgrade coordinator for NorCal saying that people were upset. And I asked him what he thought I should do. And he said, you know, you don't have to upgrade until, until it's mandatory. And so I upgraded to a category two after that. And uh, so for 2019, I was, you know, cat two. And raced the, the state champ uh, road race uh, was over in, in Monterey. And again, I didn't have any aspirations or thoughts that I was gonna do well there, but I ended up winning that race and in a four-man break, I attacked the four-man break with, like I said, you know, a mile and a half out and they were reeling me back in, coming to the line, but I was able to, to kind of squeeze out the win. So that got me my, my state road race champ and entered the, the time trial at the end of the season for, for uh, districts for that and uh, on a, a former teammate's, you know, borrowed TT bike. It was, a, I think, a 40-minute effort. and. I was the, the fastest uh, in, on the day in that category, so that's how I got a TT state champ and a, and a road championship jersey this season. What does your family work balance look like now that you're training consistently? I'm married with three daughters. Um, the oldest is a sophomore in high school, and the, the middle is a, a eighth grader, and then I've got a, a third grader. The older two are into competitive cheerleading. So they kind of do their thing on the weekends and, and I kind of do mine. My wife, uh, I think, has hopefully moved from tolerating cycling to, you know, seeing the joy that it brings me and has been more supportive. I mean, she's only been to one race in, uh, I think, the last two seasons I've raced probably 90 times. I made sure I won the race that she came to, but uh, they put up with it. Yeah, I have a full-time job and I wake up super early, um, like four in the morning, and I'll, I, I didn't do indoor trainer rides till about two months ago about a smart trainer before that I was just you know freezing my, my my ass off and doing rides in the dark in the morning from you know 4:30 to 6 30 and coming home and helping get kids up and off to school and and doing that kind of thing and then you know longer rides on the weekend but um, everyone seems to have kind of adjusted to my my cycling habit well 
What's your nutrition like? Food for me has always been fuel. I've never been drawn to food from the standpoint of that tastes good. Discipline with food has always been easy, so I, I definitely try to eat things that aren't blatantly bad deep fried foods and, and, and so forth. I was the, the crazy vegetable smoothie guy when I got into cycling, where I would basically empty everything in the refrigerator in the produce uh, drawer and that was my breakfast. I started intermittent fasting about a year and a half ago. I don't eat anything, you know, after probably seven o'clock and until lunch the next day. You know, if I'm gonna do a morning ride, I'll take nutrition while I'm on the bike, but I'm not gonna eat until till lunch or dinner. I try not to eat a lot of carbs. I don't eat any bread. Um, I've never been a bread fan, so it was easy for me to, to do away with that. I'm an omnivore, I'm not a vegan. I'm not pro or anti, I'm just kinda like, it's not for me right now, but I wouldn't swear it off. Do you plan on doing full-on gravel races? If it wasn't at the advice of my physician, um, you know, I, I would have never just gone out and bought a bike and, and started riding. Like someone had to introduce me to that. Same thing with with gravel riding. Like, you know, man, this is road riding and racing. Like, I don't need it. It can't get any better than this. Like, this is as good as it gets. And and uh, you know, doing some gravel rides and and. Um, kind of experiencing something other than just a, you know, a mass start road race or, or criterium. Um, you know, it's, it's fun. Like I'll, I'll do a lot more of it. Um, my primary passion is still road racing. I guess I'll never say never. What's your long-term sport goal for cycling? I don't know that I have a, a, a long-term goal. For me, it's just felt like this logical progression into riding and then into racing. And I really enjoy the team aspect. Recently started our own local team and you know, I'm excited about you know, bringing the guys up around me, encouraging them to press forward and, and improve their fitness. You know, I don't have to be the guy that they race for. Like I want to contribute you know, to their successes and, and uh, you know, empty myself for them.